Hi, my name's Rob Scott from UCTA, bringing you all the latest news and conversation from the unified communications and collaboration space. So today, I'm joined by one of the leading UK telecom carriers, VoiceFlex, and we're going to be discussing how channel partners can get Microsoft Teams connectivity right for their customers. Uh, welcome, everybody. Hello. Hi, Rob. How are you? I'm very good, thank you. Yeah, good to see you both. Thank you. So before okay. we get started, how about we just do a quick round of introductions. Uh, Paul, would you like to go first? Thanks, Rob. Um, Paul Taylor, um, Sales and Marketing Director at VoiceFlex. VoiceFlex is a, uh, a SIP carrier, amongst other things. We started out in life in 2005 and providing SIP trunks and associated services uh, ever since then. We are a, uh, a features and benefits based organisation as opposed to a stack them up and sell them cheap. So um, a lot of the applications we built is around to actually support the channel uh, as opposed to just uh, push products out into the channel. Thanks, Paul. Very warm welcome. Thank you. And uh, Nathan. Hi, I'm a technical director for, uh, for VoiceFlex. I've, uh, I've been with VoiceFlex since we started it in 2005. Um, I started my VoIP journey a few years before that in the, uh, in the 2000s. Um, in my role in VoiceFlex now, I, I head up the support departments and the, the development departments, and, uh, and I'm also in charge of uh, new product developments as well. Fantastic. Thanks very much. And uh, yeah, so let's talk about uh, Microsoft Teams then. It seems like there's a huge opportunity uh, right now, but just to set the scene, first of all, Paul, I mean, what, what's kind of dominating the conversation with, uh, with you and your, your channel partners? Um, there's there's quite a lot going on in the marketplace. Um, Microsoft Teams is uh, is an application that people are talking about on a on a probably a more regular basis. Um, at VoiceFlex, we see Microsoft Teams as just another telephony application on the marketplace, um, albeit a slightly different telephony application because it delivers the the UC element. And we see a lot of the the manufacturers linking up using applications such as um, Call to Teams uh, and native integration applications, which I think is all well and good. Um, what we're talking to guys about is providing that direct connectivity uh, into Microsoft Teams. And we can also do some um, applications such as forking, where we actually deliver SIP into a traditional PABX. People are just trying to sweat the asset uh, and people might want to just dip their toe into it to Microsoft Teams. So we see it as, a, as an important application moving forward. It's not a fully rounded product, I think, as everybody will agree. So I think there's, a, there's more development that can be on it. Uh, but as a UC and C application, it's extremely good. And I think the, um, the marketplace has decided that UC and C is where they want to go. And you can't really ignore Microsoft because it is the dominant application in the market at the moment. Yeah, so are we talking kind of direct routing there? I mean, when you, we, we, we're talking about providing services into Microsoft Teams. Yeah, so we've... Uh, yeah, we've sorry, Paul. I'll let yeah, you we've, <laughs> we've, um, we've set up a, a, a direct routing kind of arm of VoiceFlex, if you like. So um, what, what we've done that's a, a little bit different to some of the, the others is, is we're, we're still controlling most of the calling um, and, and configuration within the VoiceFlex core. So that gives you the benefits of of what we've got in our VoiceFlex core already. So things like the fraud protection, um, things like the call recording within the cloud. Um, and as Paul says, things like call forking so that you can deliver your calls both to your traditional PBX and to Microsoft Teams at the same time. So you're getting more flexibility there. Um, but then we do have SBCs that are using the direct routing path into the, uh, into the tenants on, uh, on, your, on your, your, your Teams tenants within your Office 365 kind of environment. I think what was quite interesting when we were scoping the product probably two years ago, uh, we looked at what uh, MS Teams actually offered uh, and it wasn't a lot. Then we said, well, really, we need to develop that to actually assist that product and we need to develop that. And then suddenly, it'd be, oh, there's a software update come out. It's got automated attendant. There's another software. So everything we thought about, it seems that uh, that Microsoft had gone on to the, uh, to the back end of it, probably due to the pandemic. And, um, and then we didn't have to create that application. So we do see it moving forward. But, um, you know, as Nathan said, it's the direct routing and the, um, the features and benefits that we can actually aid around that core product, which is probably interesting more of our resellers and, and channel partners than anybody else. I think also with... Let's just talk about that interest. Okay. Sorry, I was just going to say, let's just talk about that interest for a moment. Um, Nathan, take this one as well. But you talked on, I mean, you're a 100% channel you know, based business. So you're talking to a lot of channel partners, uh, you know, throughout the pandemic and now beyond, hopefully. 
Um, you know, what's that sentiment like towards Microsoft Teams? Is it, um, do they see it as an opportunity? Is it, uh, or, you know, is it still deemed a threat? I think we, we do see still, um, you know, there, there is a convergence of the, of the market happening, uh, but we do still see, you know, two kind of main, I guess, kind of families of, of, of resellers that we deal with. You do have the, the, the more IT focused, ITC ones that, that are you know coming in very strongly and traditionally they were looking at, at a lot of hosted platforms in order to sell um, and Teams has just dropped in you know so well in, into their lap in terms of what people want. Um, they tend to be you know pretty well skilled up in, in, in the area of, of Teams and configuration of Active Directory and things like that uh, and they understand it a lot and they they tend to uh, be less aware of the features that it might not have, um, you know, during the implementations. And then the customer comes back and says, "Oh, well, my old system used to do X, Y, Z. Um, why, why can't we do this on Teams?" Now, I think Microsoft have addressed a lot of those during the pandemic, um, and you know, the, the the output from Microsoft in terms of features has been, you know, pretty uh, fantastic. On the other side, we have the traditional PBX, um, you know, maintainers and and uh, resellers. Um, and there, there's, you know, we've seen a lot of acquisitions into the IT space from some of the bigger ones of those to, to get this um, skill set, you know, to, to implement Teams. Um, and it's not that it's it's that difficult, but we, as, as VoiceFlex, have tried to address this as well by having implementation tools built into our portal to assist with the configuration of the Teams tenants. So things like, you know, the user configurations, the PowerShell scripts, things like that. So within our portal, we have tools there where you can just select um, you know, the numbers that you want to configure and it will actually generate the PowerShell commands that you have to do um, and, and you know, kind of walk you through a little bit more on, on the implementation. So I think, you know, there, there has been a big change in, in, in the, the, the environment. Um, you know, it was happening anyway, but, you know, the pandemic, I think, has just accelerated that. Um, and now we are seeing, you know, a lot of people are, are happier to adopt the soft clients, you know, the, the, the traditional desk phones, you know, when we start started selling phone systems, VoIP systems, you know, back in the early 2000s, you know, people would look at a headset and just be like, oh, well, I'm never wearing that. I'm, no way I'm wearing that. And I think, you know, the, the environment has changed so much now. You know, people don't want a desk phone. People want a client on their mobile. People want a client on their on the laptop and they're happy to do away with um, with the desk phone. So I think, you know, things are, are changing pretty rapidly now. Great, yeah. And Paul, back over to you. And in terms of the opportunity, uh, for channel partners has that i would like you to kind of talk to me around the opportunity but first of all has that opportunity kind of changed in the last 12 months as well as a as a result of the pandemic and you know with this mass migration to work from home and that kind of thing is what, what how would you kind of define the opportunity right now for channel partners um, I think it's it's like anything that it was forced. There, there was there was no opportunity. You had to do something, and most people have got Microsoft Teams or they got Microsoft an application on their desktop, and so they started using it. And you know, friends of mine are working different businesses. They've suddenly got on all this UCNC communications. It's it's fantastic. I've never used it before. I can just sit at home and have a meeting. You know, we as an organisation have been pushing this for a number of years. And most decent hosted platforms have had a UC element, but nobody's ever bought it because nobody's ever needed it. But I think it's, uh, it's accelerated the growth and people are far more comfortable now to have a, to have a meeting online and they're already available. I mean, I've had three Teams meetings already this morning because you can draw people in from different places. We had a meeting on Monday. I couldn't get in because the technology wasn't good enough where I was. Um, but I could have been stuck on the M1 for two hours and never made that meeting and just turned around again. So I think the, the adaptation to actually bring it into your life is there. And we always uh, tend to look at um, an application that's come in from a field. So you look at an application like WhatsApp. All the kids used to use it. Now they're moving to, to Instagram or TikTok or whatever it might be. But we just see Teams as, as an extension of that. So you've got your groups uh, and everything's regulated. And we used to walk in pre, pre this. We used to go into a meeting and say, yeah, you see and see you need it, whether it's just for messaging service. And the MD would sit there and say, no, we don't need it. We don't do that. And I'd say, right, OK, you know, talk to the other four or five people in the room. Right. How many WhatsApp groups, groups have you got? And they'd all put their hands up. So they've got, oh, got one within the boss, one without the boss and so on and so forth. So. So Teams or a UCNC application brings that in and uh, it, it brings HR. So if anybody is sort of manipulating the application, it can move it forward. So I think the whole UCNC space has actually moved forward. You know, as we keep saying, Microsoft is the benchmark. And a lot of the other manufacturers have recognized this and said, OK, we'll provide exceptionally good telephony applications, 
but we'll use UC and C as a backup if people want it for that application. And I think that's a fantastic way to go. And it just opens up the, um, the, the market for everybody. Great. And Nathan, from, from your point of view, um, you know, as the, it's a kind of, from an operational point of view, I suppose, and a technical point of view, as the, as the gig changed, you know, first of all, it was direct routing. It was, you know, plugging in SIP trunks via an SBC into Microsoft Teams. Um, but I'm hearing a lot more kind of, you know, variants of that nowadays in terms of deployment methods and PBXs being attached to, to Teams and that kind of thing. So I'm, I'm keen to hear from you kind of, you know, has that expanded the opportunity as well? Um, I think so. I mean, I think, you know, a lot more people are, are, are getting aware of how they can they can integrate with um, Teams. I think, you know, what we're trying to do is make it as easy as possible for, for, for people to do it and as, and as quickly as possible. So, you know, automating the tools, automating the deployment. So, um, you know, it's, it's not a, a big cost for people to implement it. So, you know, we're taking some of that cost on with the SBCs and things like that, which direct routing is great at. Um, but we also offer with that the flexibility of, of what you can do um, with with the, the the numbers or the telephony once you've got it. So um, you know there are you know new new ways of connecting to Teams. You know with some of the some of the other um, you know bigger providers now. Um, but I think you know it's it's about getting that um, getting that 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 balance right between the flexibility that you want and um, and and the implementation costs of of, of going for it. Um, you know, but you, you could go and buy your calling panels from Microsoft, um, and and you know there's there's other implementations where whereby it's it's very much a user based uh, PSDN access, so you're paying for it, um, you know, for for each user. What we do at VoiceFlex is we we do it similar to the old traditional ISDN or or SIP trunking model, whereby you pay per channel that you that you want to terminate. So you can have a thousand numbers, you could have a hundred channels, um, you could have. Uh, a thousand users, you could have ten channels. You know, it's it's up to you how much you think you need, and then you pay for the for, for the amount of channels that you think you, you think you need there. So, um, yeah, there there is many ways to implement. I our use case might not be you know perfect for everyone, but but I'd say that it fits in quite well for uh, for most. It is perfect for everybody, Nathan. It, it is perfect <laughs> for everybody. Okay. <laughs> yeah. I, I, Should we say we talk about? Sorry. We also said we'd talk about some of the uh, the things that people weren't thinking about, Paul. I mean, you, you bet when we were talking uh, pre this session, uh, there were a number of things that you you were keen to share with the audience around kind of thing things to think about, and and certainly more opportunities for the channel partner if uh, if these aren't taken care of. Do you want to expand on those? Yeah, there's a, there's a theme running through, and we're doing it through the organisation at the moment, and it's called what if, and so what if this happens, and what if that happens. And I think we, we, we're trying to put this through to our, to our channel partners. What, well, what if, what if that happens? What if the customer decides to do that? What if the data center falls over? And so it's to put all those applications. So a lot of resellers are exceedingly loyal to the, uh, to, to organizations they've dealt with for years and years, which I think is absolutely fantastic and very commendable. But you have to have that options within your, your closet. One of the things that, um, we found within, uh, Microsoft is that somebody's got a tenant. But they could have people based in France or Germany or New York or, or Paris. And they get the problem then where they need to actually provide a communications platform, which is worldwide, not just UK based. So we've done a lot on international SIP breakout with um, um, some, of the, some of the bigger partners in Europe. Uh, and it's proved it's sexually successful. Now, because not many um, SIP carriers have got the length and the breadth and the experience that we've actually got in-house, they struggle or cannot provide these applications. So we're pretending to get a lot more business on what people do for bespoke applications. And then we're pulling in the run of the mill stuff to actually do it as well. But, you know, what Nathan said about the way we actually provision it. So we provide per SIP trunk, not a user basis. Now, if you look at your mobile phone bill now, it's dropped through the floor. And that used to be a minutes based application where you pay for your calls. On Teams, you know, the, the amount of calls that people are making now off net i.e. To, to a PSTN line, has re reduced significantly. So inter-office, people just use Teams. If I want to call Nathan uh, or any of the uh, any of the other people in the organisation, I just jump on a Teams call, whether it's on my mobile using GSM or whether it's in the office. So it is the sort of default now application to go for. So I think when resellers and channel partners are looking at the commercial applications, you know, you don't need a connection per user. 
because a lot of people would exclusively use Teams to make calls internally, as it used to be, oh, I need to phone a, a, an engineer who's on the road or a sales guy on the road. They'll just use Teams or they'll just message on. So I think the commercial applications and the way the products are focused, it's more of a, of a service-based application. And it's looking for those sort of gotchas in the market, you know, what if? What if we're, we're using a Teams client which has got somebody based in front? How do we cope with that? How do we bring them into the family? How do we connect and connect to the emergency services in front? And this is things resellers are, are having to adhere to now because, you know, theoretically, if they're providing that service, they are a carrier and they're responsible for the care and security of that customer and providing those routes correctly uh, and in the correct manner. Yeah, that makes sense. Really good sense. And and Nathan, in terms of, um, you know, how do you wrap this up for, for, for channel partners technically? I mean, how easy is this to kind of onboard and help, help uh, yeah, um, partners kind of I mean, we, these services up? As, as, I, as I said earlier, you know, we, we've tried to make this as, as, as simple as possible, you know, on the, on the voice flex side for, for the implementation to get you connected into um, into your, your, your team's tenants. So, you know, once you're set up as a reseller, you can go on, you can create your customer you know, straight away. You can place orders for that customer straight away. Um, the Teams is a, is a drop down option. You, you select the Teams and then after that point, you know, it's the, uh, the normal configuration for the, for the DNS authentication. Um, you add your SBC to your tenant and you can, you can start making receiving calls within, you know, within a couple of hours, depending on how fast the, uh, the, the Teams configuration rolls around the Microsoft infrastructure. Um, but you know, literally, you can you can decide that you want to place the order in the morning. By lunchtime, you're going to be making and receiving calls. Um, it's it's very very simple to implement. Um, you know, with the international calls as well. Um, you know, if you want to bring international calls in, we do pretty much instant provisioning on most uh, of the international calls that we offer. Um, so so again, you know, within you know less than an hour, depending on how long it takes to uh, to, to to replicate round, you can have that number working for your uh, for your user that's just requested it in France or Spain or, or Portugal or wherever. Yeah, I think just jumping in that with the international stuff, there tends to be a lot of pre-sale support. So um, all our sales force have been, have been doing this for, um, for for a number of years now, and they're very adapted it. And I think a lot of channel partners, because it's a little bit out of the norm, sometimes they struggle to get their heads around it. So there is quite a lot of pre-sale support for the particular applications and the way they pitch it to their customer. You know, we we were talking earlier about some of the rules and regulations. With me and Nathan were with another partner on how the international rules and regulations have changed. Uh, and with that, uh, it's sort of a uh, a, a paperwork nightmare now because you're actually dealing with the you know the offcoms around the world not necessarily just with a localized one so i think experience counts for a lot and because we've been doing it for a number of years uh, we just it, it, we make it look easy we make it look far too easy <laughs> that's great and in terms of uh, finding out more paul i mean what's the best way for anyone interested in uh, looking at your services uh, to get in touch um we've got the the website which is um www.voiceflex.com if anybody wants to hit the sales it's sales at voiceflex.com and um we'll be we're happy to discuss anybody's needs or requirements with um, with those accordingly fantastic hey paul nathan it's been super speaking to you today thanks very much for joining me thank you thanks very much rob Cheers, appreciate it and that's it from us. If you've enjoyed today's session, please subscribe to UC Today News and give this video a quick share on social as it's always appreciated. And if you're a UC fan or a Microsoft Teams fan even and want to be part of the conversation, you can join us using the UC News hashtag on LinkedIn, Twitter and Facebook. And our social links are also in the description. So I'm Rob Scott from UC Today. Thanks for watching. Thank you. Cheers then. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.